Many individuals falsely believe that the majority of Catholics at the time of Christopher Columbus's voyages believe the Earth is flat. According to Geoffrey Burton Russell, historian and author of Inventing the Flat Earth, Washington Irving was one of the individuals most responsible for creating this myth. In Irving's book, The Life and Voyages of Christopher Columbus, he invented a fictional account of the Council of Salamanca, in which he portrays Columbus arguing his case for a globe earth against the churchmen of his time. Irving was a fiction writer. He also wrote Rip Van Winkle and The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Catholic Church has never officially taught that the earth is flat. Pope Leo XIII used the French word for globe in his encyclical Depuis le Jour. Pope Alexander VI refers to both the North and the South Pole twice in his 1493 bull Inter Chaitera. The Bible describes the earth as a circle at Isaiah 40 verse 22. The Dewey Rheims translation of the Bible translates this as globe. There are no scriptures that undeniably point to the earth being flat, and even if some of the authors believe this, they were simply describing what appeared to the senses, as pointed out by Pope Leo XIII in Providentissimus Deus. Quote, the sacred writers did not seek to penetrate the secrets of nature, but rather described and dealt with things in more or less figurative language, or in terms which were commonly used at the time, and which in many instances are in daily use at this day, even by the most eminent men of science. Ordinary speech primarily and properly describes what comes under the senses, and somewhat in the same way the sacred writers, as the angelic doctor also reminds us, went by what sensibly appeared, or put down what God, speaking to men, signified, in the way men could understand and were accustomed to. End quote. The Salvator Mundi pictures Christ holding a globe representing the world. The Blessed Virgin Mary is frequently depicted standing on top of the globe earth, crushing the serpent under her feet, as described at Genesis 3 verse 15. The infant Jesus of Prague is frequently depicted holding a globus cruciger, a globe with a cross on top of it, representing Christ's dominion over the world. The original design for the miraculous medal, according to Father Joseph Durvin, was called the Virgin of the Globe, because it showed Our Lady standing on a globe and holding a globe in her hands. The Blessed Virgin Mary told St. Catherine Labre that the globe she was holding represents the whole world. Quote, the ball which you see represents the whole world, especially France, and each person in particular. The problem for some churchmen was not so much the globe shape of the earth as to whether there was land or people on the other side of the globe. Such people were called Antichthenes, and it was said that they lived in the Antipodes, the regions on the opposite side of the world. St. Augustine said that even if it could be demonstrated scientifically that the earth is a sphere, that it does not follow that there is land or people on the other side of it. However, St. Virgilius believed there were such people, and according to the 1912 Catholic Encyclopedia, he successfully cleared his name of any charges of heresy, probably due to him believing such people were descended from Adam. St. Thomas Aquinas also mentions the roundness of the earth twice in the Summa Theologiae, once in the very first question. St. Bede stated in The Reckoning of Time, quote, The reason why the same calendar days are of unequal length is the roundness of the earth, for not without reason is it called the orb of the world on the pages of Holy Scripture and of ordinary literature. It is in fact a sphere set in the middle of the whole universe. It is not merely circular like a shield, or spread out like a wheel, but resembles more a ball, being equally round in all directions." End quote. Claudius Ptolemy, whose geocentric view of the universe was widely held for 1300 years, believed the earth is a sphere. In his Almagest he states, quote, Now, that also the earth taken as a whole is sensibly spherical, we could most likely think out in this way. He also states, quote, Since the differences in the hours of eclipses is found to be proportional to the distances between the places, one would reasonably suppose the surface of the earth spherical. He also stated, quote, It is clear that here the curvature of the earth covering parts uniformly in oblique directions proves its spherical form on every side. End quote. Around 69% of the Roman emperors between 491 and 1453 issued coins with the Globus Crucica on it. The textbook De Sfera Mundi, meaning the sphere of the world, was widely used in European universities for hundreds of years after its publication in 1230. 
In spite of some authors attempting to brandish the Catholic religion as being anti-science, the truth is just the opposite. True scientific discoveries magnify the complex order and intelligent design of creation, and thus glorify God.